Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. This is part four of an ongoing series that will end with this final part. Uh, this part will cover September 21st through October 5th of 2024. Just a little bit of footage from each day. We uploaded this little mini series just to illustrate to you exactly what a long-term attrition collection looks like when we go back multiple times on a nest and we can't get to the nest itself because it's built inside a block foundation that had no access points but we can collect all of the flying wasps until we starve out the nest so in the last four days of collection the population had gone down significantly and by october 5th there was not enough wasps to try to go back and collect anymore so the nest had starved out if you've seen previous episodes of the series you'll notice that the population in the nest is dwindling down each time we come to this location and do a little bit more attrition collection the population gets smaller and smaller first few times we showed up there were thousands of wasps pulled out each time we came there uh, then it was down to hundreds of wasps and then it was down to dozens of wasps and then it was down to none eventually after october 5th we stopped coming back because the situation was now under control and the client was reporting that there was no more flying wasps and of course that's always the end goal for the client uh, we want them to be wasp free and at the same time we want to collect as many live female worker wasps as possible which we did they can now be used for venom immunotherapy uh, so we will freeze them and send them off to the lab so they can be utilized in the biomedical business september 29th 2024 we're back at the porch attrition location. Still very active nest. We've been rained out for the last few days, so we haven't been able to get here, but clearly there's some more population to collect here. They're still trying to enter along the side and the front. As you can see here, we added quite a bit of tape to the sides of the block foundation and also a little bit more tape in the lower part of the front. And basically over time, this trained the wasps in the nest to use that front entrance only pretty much. And that really saved us a lot of time, made it more efficient. We like to use duct tape on this sort of thing because it tends to stick to most surfaces and it doesn't stick too hard. It's not like glue. It's not like caulk or anything else. And it's pretty easy to remove at the end of the job. And then the client will go in at the end of the season when the first few hard frosts happen in early winter late fall then they can go ahead and seal up all of this area so they don't deal with this problem every season it's important they get that done before the spring queens come out in the following season because they'll just end up with the same problem again usually yellow jackets will not use the same nest per se but they will use the same cavity over and over again and build new nests in there when we do nest removals when we're in a place where we don't have to do an attrition collection like this where we can actually go into the building and remove all the brood comb and all the paper from the nest and everything it's not unusual for us to see multiple old nests in the same cavity so we always tell clients the removal or the attrition collection is just the first step that just gets rid of the first problem you have which is a live nest in your structure the second step always is sealing the thing up permanently your whole structure so this doesn't become a recurring issue and we do see clients who never quite get around to sealing up the structure they're just happy with no more wasps for the time being and they either forget or just decide not to bother with the sealing and sure enough the next season our phone rings again same client same place the only difference this time is it's a new queen might be a different species of wasp might be the same species of wasp but the key issue is there's something about the cavity itself in that structure that is attracting these wasps. There's open holes they can explore. Once they get inside, they do kind of a sonic measurement of the space. They buzz their wings and they fly around and they can feel the vibration of that space and tell how big it is. If it's the right size, they move in. So it's always better to prevent that from happening by sealing the whole place up seasonally check it every year caulk tends to dry out and crack up over time especially in areas where there's a lot of hard freezing over the winter uh, so it's not a one-time thing you want to check this out each season we're going to slow the footage down into slow motion now for just a few minutes and let you understand close up and in slow motion how these wasps navigate back to the vacuum instead of navigating back to their nest if you set the vacuum hose 
right where their main entrance is and their main exit is. It's just a matter of time before they make the wrong move and attempt to get into the hole in that wall and they just hit the airstream of that suction perfectly and they get taken right in. So if you just leave it there, no poison is required. It's a simple matter of plugging in your vac and letting it run for a while and you can easily take care of a wasp nest that way. We always prefer, of course, that they call us so we can use the wasps for venom immunotherapy rather than see them go to waste completely. But the bottom line is anybody who can set up a shop vac safely, and the key word is safely, if you can get in there safely without getting stung up, then pretty much anybody can do this if they have the right shop vac tools. You may notice here that this time of year, toward the fall months of the year, there's less food being flown back to the nest by the foraging wasp. There are simply less bugs in the environment toward the fall, the end of the summer. A lot of the prey that they would normally go after are now gone for the season, so there's fewer and fewer bits of food to bring back to the larva anyway. So the nest would by itself eventually starve out anyway. We're just speeding that process up by doing a attrition collection because we're collecting all of the foraging wasps that would normally collect food and bring it back. Between that and the natural reduction of food in the environment, the nest is rapidly dying out. This particular attrition collection lasted for seven days, different weeks, but seven days in total. We were out there collecting for an hour or two each time. And that made a huge difference in how many wasps the client had to deal with in that period of time. The thing about vacuum extraction is that if you miss one because it's walking out of the nest and clinging onto the cement, it goes past the entry to the collection device, that's just one direction. It has to come back eventually. And when it comes back, we'll get them then. So it's not a huge deal if you miss them one direction or the other, but just by having it there, it's just a matter of time, you'll get them all. So attrition collections are a matter of patience and a matter of professionalism. Coming back when you say you're going to come back, coming back routinely enough that the client is not bothered by swarms of wasps all the time. We have to keep up with that and make sure that there's not a lot of annoying wasps all over their property for weeks at a time. So long as you keep knocking down the population on a regular basis, they never get out of hand and the collection can be utilized for venom immunotherapy. Vespula germanica, this is the German yellow jacket. Good collection from the attrition job we're taking out from underneath the porch. So here we'll take you right inside the collection device so you know what it's like from the wasp's eye point of view in there. October 5th, 2024, we're back at the porch attrition collection. Population steadily reduced. We're getting fewer every collection now, so the nest is starting to starve out. Put the white rag over the collection bottle just to reflect some of the sun and the heat off of the bottle. That way we don't have to uh, end the collection prematurely due to overheating. It seems to work pretty well. So this was the last day of collection on this job. After this point, the client was reporting there was almost no sign of wasps at all, so we didn't bother coming back anymore, and the job was considered complete. So we hope you enjoyed watching a series on how an attrition collection works when you cannot reach the nest, but you still want to get those wasps out without using poison. If you enjoy the content on our channel in general, please remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment to let us know you're there. Thanks for watching.